Now that we've introduced our general approach to the primeval history of chapters 1 through 11, we're in a position to look at the details of the first section of Genesis, God's ideal world described in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 through chapter 2 verse 3. When most evangelicals think about the opening chapter of the Bible, they think about all the controversies that surround this interpretation. Did God create the world in six ordinary days? Were the days of Genesis 1 great ages or epochs? Or is Genesis 1 a somewhat poetic, non-historical celebration of God's creative activity? All of these positions are acceptable within evangelical circles. Although my own view is that Genesis 1 teaches that God made the world as we know it today in six ordinary days, not all Bible-believing Christians hold to this view. As we approach the opening chapters of Genesis in these lessons, our concern is not so much with historical issues like these. We're more concerned with literary questions. We're more interested in how and why Moses wrote this chapter. What literary structures appear in this passage and how do these structures help us understand Moses' purpose? We should begin by noting that this passage has three major steps, namely a beginning, a middle, and an ending. Moses' creation account begins with chapter 1 verses 1 through 2. We may summarize the content of these verses as the dark chaotic world. Chapter 1, verse 3 through 31 form a middle section of this material, which contains the so-called six days of creation, or what we will call the six days of ordering creation. Finally, chapter 2, verses 1 through 3 is the Sabbath day, or as we'll call it, the ideal world. We will explore all three portions of this structure in this lesson, beginning with the dark, chaotic world. Second, we'll investigate the last section, which deals with the ideal world. And finally, we'll explore the six days of ordering. Let's look first at the dark, chaotic world of chapter 1, verses 1 through 2. Looking at the first portion of Genesis chapter 1, we see a very important dramatic tension between the chaos covering the earth and the Spirit of God. The opening of chapter 1 verses 1 and 2 sets the stage by giving a title in verse 1 and by describing the initial condition of the world in verse 2. Listen to the way Moses put it in chapter 1 verse 2. Now the earth was formless and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. This verse introduces the dramatic tension that flows through this entire chapter. On one side of this tension, the world is formless and empty, or as it says in Hebrew, tohu vavohu. This Hebrew expression does not occur frequently enough in the Bible for us to know precisely what it means, but many scholars believe it meant that the world was uninhabitable, hostile toward human life, much like a desert or wilderness is inhospitable to human life. So, at the beginning of this passage, we see that an uninhabitable, dark, primordial, chaotic deep covered the entire earth. The second element in the dramatic tension also appears in chapter 1, verse 2. Moses wrote that the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. The Hebrew term used here is merachefet, which means to fly above or to encircle above. So we see a very dramatic picture right at the beginning of this passage. On one side, we see chaos on the earth. On the other side, we see the Spirit of God hovering above the chaos. In effect, God was ready to move into action to remedy the chaos which covered the earth. This initial dramatic tension raised several questions. What will the Spirit of God do? What will happen to the chaos? With this initial dramatic tension of the opening verses in mind, we're in a position to look at the resolution of this tension in the final section of Moses' creation account, the ideal world, in Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. This section is structured very simply. It begins in chapter 2, verse 1, with a summary statement that God had finished His creative work, and it concludes in chapter 2, verses 2 and 3, with God at rest. We read these words in Genesis chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. 
By the seventh day God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day he rested from all his work, and God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. When Moses described God as entering a state of Sabbath rest, granting a special blessing to that day and making it holy, he declared that the tension between the chaos and God's hovering spirit had been resolved. God had subdued the darkness, ruled over the chaotic deep, and delighted in his ideally ordered world. The creation story comes to an end with this delightfully peaceful vision of the universe in perfect harmony.